Thanks for staying with us. The average cost of a household food basket in South Africa is currently 4,200 rand. That's for a family of seven, which is an average, uh, who, which is an average low-income household size. Now, this is all according to data from the Household Affordability Index, as published by the Peter Maritzburg Economic Justice and Dignity Group. Let's uh, bring you more on this and uh, speak to the group's program coordinator, Mr. Mervyn Abrams. Mervyn, good morning to you, and just we'll unpack some of the biggest numbers uh, in a moment. And I know Marcel will, uh, will jump in here, of course. But what stood out for me, just having a quick look at this is the number of uh, general workers at the national minimum wage that after paying for transport, after paying for electricity, which we unpacked earlier about ESCOM, they're actually ending up in debt nearly every single month. I mean, this, it can't continue like this, can it? Well, this, this is the direct result uh, of, 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 of a period. I mean, we've seen this over years in which the increases on basic goods and services far outstrip the increases in, in wages. Um, and, and, and so we do end up with an economy that's in, in, in built up on debt. Mm. Uh, and at some stage, the whole house will come coming down. So we're going to have to find a solution out of debt. And it seems that the only way to do that is, is, is one of two ways, is either to increase the national minimum wage substantially mm. or to ensure that the inflation on goods and services are not uh, 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 increase way above uh, household income. So, so we actually in a crisis situation yeah. with regard to those things. And, and crisis is what many p people, uh, many families would have in mind as they struggle to put just basic food on the table every month. I mean, that's the statistic we have on the screen right now. A basket of essential costs, uh, uh, essential goods, costs 340 rand more than it did just in September last year. This is not year on year. That's just over the last eight months. And you've been quoted saying that we've seen a spike in prices between March and April, which is the highest you have ever seen. Crisis is one thing. But surely we need something to happen or something to change sooner rather than later. Yes, and so, I mean, our prediction is if this continues, because, Marcel, we should also remember that our figures came in last month. So mm. that was just before uh, we would see the impact of the fuel price increases that mm. we have seen in the past uh, few months, as well as the electricity price, because these are essential input costs into food production. So we are expecting to see those costs coming through in the prices. Um, and, and, and that would in all likelihood mean that the price of, of our basket will increase yet again. So we could see it outstrip 10%. Um, now, like we have just discussed, 10% increase in food, uh, possibly 7% increase in transport, 15% increase in electricity, but a 4.5% increase in the national minimum wage, a 1.2% increase in the old age grant, a 2% increase in the child support grant. I mean, these costs do not just weigh yeah. up. And, mm. and so the only, I mean, what women tell us, the only strategy they have to, to, to survive is actually to cut back on the amount of food they eat and the quality of food they eat. And that creates yet another crisis mm. in the area of health and mm. education for us in the coming years. And, and, and Mervyn, let's just remind viewers as well just how important uh, this increase in the, in the food basket is. If we look at that increase of 340 rand, how many of us by now do not know the Sasser story, this 350 rand COVID relief grant? But even before that, uh, there was a Sasser grant being paid out to a large portion of our population. And even that, if you look at these increases, uh, I'm taking a look just, for example, at maize meal between March and April this year. It went up from 232 rand to 246 rand. That, that was going up an average of 6%. Let's call it 15 rand month on month. When you're only getting a few hundred rand a month, that increase, and that's just for maize meal. 
the list continues, uh, that starts adding up and vanishing very quickly, doesn't it? Where is where I'm going with this? Does government come in? Because those who are at the bottom of the income groups are going to be asking, but why can't government uh, bail out ESCOM and, and get the prices down? Why does the fuel price have to keep going up? Basic everyday questions. Yes, it, it does seem it does seem that um, government's priorities are are questionable. Exactly as you say, you know, if I'm an unemployed person sitting at home, dependent upon the three hundred and fifty uh, rand COVID relief that has now come to an end, um, and government is bailing out SAA to the tune of billions. Um, um, ESCOM keeps on getting in uh, uh, bailouts, and, and and I don't know if you've noticed the trend, but as soon as they get bailouts, we get uh, load shedding as well, <laughs> following very soon thereafter, um, uh, which questions their the, the business model, and 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 so so it's not unreasonable for an ordinary citizen to ask what is government's priority. Um, because we have been arguing that the COVID-19 uh, situation continues. The economic hardship continues for small business. It continues for, 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 for low-income workers. And because the COVID-19 uh, uh, hardship continues, uh, the support that government has allocated be it small, it was very small in number, but it did help um, uh, for that to continue. And and so, for instance, if we did have the 350 still support, and if we did have the 250 support top up to the old age grant, that would have offset the increases in food prices that we are seeing currently. Uh, Mervyn, just as we wrap up our conversation with you, I mean, your index is based on uh, a surveying um, women in, lower in, in the lower income bracket, and, and they on an average live in a family of seven and, and like you said, uh, the feedback you're getting from them is that they're making decisions based on buying lower quality food, buying less food and of course the knock-on effects for the entire family unit is vast. I mean you even think of the nutrition that children in that household need uh, uh, going forward. There's also a report that says uh, we're looking at about a third of households in South Africa that are forecast to fall out of the middle class and they then too will be included in a lower income bracket. Uh, we're looking at a situation now with those who are struggling along the bread line is just becoming bigger and bigger in South Africa. Oh, what do you foresee uh, um, looking at your affordability index going forward into the rest of 2021? Well, Sal, it's, 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 it's actually quite sad. And, and, and we, we, you know, we are human. And so the emotional pain almost when we look through this, this figures um, because we cannot see a way out. I mean, it is, it is pure market-driven economics that when input costs increase in food production, then that cost is handed over to the consumer. Um, and, and so we can see no way out in terms of these increases, uh, increasing food costs. On the other hand, we are seeing no attempt on the part of the state to, to step in to do one of two things. either to keep prices down, and government can do that, because ESCOM is a state institution. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, unfortunately, we've lost Mervyn there, the Peter Marisburg Economic Justice and Dignity Group Program Coordinator, Mervyn Abrams, speaking to us live there from Durban. But I think we've got the gist... Yeah of um, a, a rather alarming situation that so many households find themselves in in South